We got some hot docs that'll jack you up. We got an exquisite doc about the intensity of powerlifting. One man's story about finding his center on center ice. Tips on making the perfect goal in soccer. Our special guest, James Montgomery, will show us some pretty slick moves for all you skaters out there. We got tricks, flips, kicks. It's coming to you live here on The Journal. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Sports are all about teamwork, commitment, and dedication. It takes a certain mindset to excel in a sport, but building strength is always key. Our first documentary is about a power lifter who shows us how our bodies can achieve extraordinary strength and determination. This is one person's journey for ultimate strength. Let's watch that now. This concept of strength is, is crazy because it, I don't know what the limit is for myself. You know, being a human being at 165 pounds, this is the maximum I can lift. You know, it's every day I'm constantly pushing myself to see, can I lift more, can I lift heavier, and try and find that limit. And then once I feel like I felt that limit, then, you know, there's someone out there that's, that can do a lot more, and then I strive to want to, to catch up to them and to be able to lift just as much. And it's just this endless pursuit, and it's incredible to be able to see that development and that progression over time. I'm curious to see just how far I can go. My name is Benedict San Juan, 29 years old. I got into powerlifting about two years ago, just been spending some time in the gym and doing a lot of the, the big lifts, so the squat, bench, and deadlift. And I wanted to learn more about how to improve and how to get stronger at that. And a few people in the gym recommended me to look at powerlifting and look at powerlifters and sort of found this community of people that were just absolutely amazing and really, really strong. And from there, I became fascinated with trying to see how strong I can be and how far I can push myself. One of the biggest issues that, that I have is everyone takes home a little bit of baggage with them. You know, whether it's anxiety from an upcoming test or stress from some group dynamic. And one of the things that I find very interesting about coming to the gym and lifting is I have to leave all that out the door. You know, before I enter here, I can't bring it in with me. I can't have those kind of distractions because of the fact that, again, you know, I need to be able to have as much focus as possible in order to do these lifts safely. And taking the time to focus and to ground myself, I leave all of that behind. It's amazing because once I'm on the platform, whether it's here in the gym or a competition, nothing else matters. It's just, it's me, it's the weight, and it's just my ability to be able to, to make a successful lift. In order for me to do the lifts, I need to have that confidence in myself. And it's the same thing with anything else in life, you know? If I want to ask for that promotion or if I want to ask for a raise, I need to have the confidence in myself to know that I deserve it or that I want to ask for it. When you're sure of yourself, when there is that, that element of decisiveness, it becomes a lot easier and you feel like you can achieve a lot more when you're confident in yourself. Now joining us is the man behind the doc, Ian McGilvery. Ian, tell us more about the documentary that we just saw. I'd like to thank you for having me on your show. Basically, there's a bit of misconception around powerlifting. A lot of people think it's a really intense sport, but it's actually not. It's actually really peaceful to the mind. It really calms the nerves. That's what I learned when uh, seeing Ben. Uh, is there a specific event that Benedict is training for in powerlifting? Is there, what was that, Advantage? A specific event that Benedict is training for with his powerlifting? An event, uh, yeah, he, he's an amateur 
power lifter, so he does do competitions from time to time, but overall it's really just a hobby for him. He kind of does it to improve himself as a person, uh, meet people. It's more of like a hobby, right? Do you think that there's a social uh, thing that draws people to powerlifting? Is there a good community of powerlifters out there? Uh, it really, it really depends. He said there's goods and good things about the community, and there's bad things about the community. One thing about what he's part of is he goes to a very closed gym where there's a small community of people, and they really encourage him to work out and they support him with what he does. Right? Is there a, a danger to powerlifting? Like they're lifting a lot of weight in those right. videos that we just saw. Is there risks of injury that are fairly common? Right, um, so the, the heaviest weight that Benedict could do is the, uh, he does the, the deadlift, right? It's about 350 pounds is his max. And yes, there is possibility of a really, really bad injury um, if, you know, if you lift it too heavy. And then if you're doing like a bench press or something like that, you can drop it on your neck and it could really cause serious injury. So there is a chance of that, but nothing really happened too bad with him. I mean, he really only had a few uh, minor muscle tears or anything like that. So nothing too major, right? All right, really interesting. Uh, thank you very much, Ian, for joining us. Uh, let's go live to our studio and see what we have in store for you later. Uh, I think I hear something going on back there. What is that, Zach? Hey guys, I'm here with my boy, James Montgomery, hey. an awesome skateboarder with a passion for the kicks and flips. Check us out later, yo. It better be fire. Our audience demands it. With hockey season still in play, we can't get enough of that rush that we get when we're at our home bar, drinking pints, eating chicken wings, cheering as our boys in blue play their hearts out. Here's a behind the scenes look at the training hockey players go through on a daily basis. My name is Kevin Walburn. I grew up in Scarborough. I am 23 years old and I love to play hockey. I didn't play growing up and whatnot, but ever since I started playing, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's the best getaway. Hockey is something I just used to like get away from life and just like escape reality. Just watching the Maple Leafs, watching Matt Sundin, and I thought he was incredible. In Scarborough, it's not the best neighborhood in the area. It wasn't easy and everything. I never played hockey growing up. We just couldn't afford it, and that's what it was. It was kind of tough. Eventually, my brother, my twin brother actually, my best friend, started working at uh, Jack Astor's, a local bar in the area. And we started as busboys. We worked our way up, became servers, made a little bit of money. <sighs> Trying to juggle everything. Like, the hard thing was juggling school. I eventually figured it out, using my spares accordingly, doing homework at lunch. My four years of high school was just pretty much jam-packed. Like, it was nuts. Working hard helped bank some money and it even helped me get to school and move out when I was young. And I had a little bit of money lying around and the friends with my high school, they all played. They played for years and they said, hey, we have a team, come play with us. And I'm like, uh, I don't really even know how to ice skate. And they're like, come on, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. It's only house league. So I'm like, okay, whatever. And I worked really hard to buy my first pair of skates. I remember I walked over to Kenya Tire had 75 bucks in my pocket, bought my first pair of skates, and went on the ice, and a week later, I had my first one. Here I am, shaking on my skates, getting on the ice, you know? This guy's running me over. It was crazy. But once I got the feel of it, I've never turned back since. Every Monday, I just look forward to hanging out with the boys and getting away from work and everything I deal with in everyday life. Just get to hang out, play some hockey, and some good camaraderie. great thing to just get away and escape and just forget everything in the past. Just go on the ice with a couple of friends and it's just perfect. This is my new medicine.
Are you ready for some football? Wait, what? Oh yeah, soccer. Every summer, thousands and thousands of fans from all over the world watch the FIFA World Cup. Want to play like the pros? Here's some basic tips that will guide you for kicking that perfect field goal. Let's watch that now. Hey, my name is Sebastian Escobar. I am a soccer player. I play in like seven different teams. I have experience in soccer ever since I was 13 years old. I came from Colombia, Medellin. Um, I left there when I was nine. I played all my youth in Colombia. The biggest sport is soccer. Oh, what? Yeah. That's Barcelona. Barcelona. What is better? Barcelona is <laughs> the best. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hannah. I'm a Ukrainian girl. And my name is Carolina, and I'm a University of Toronto student studying political science. It's my first time to be in soccer field, actually, and I'm kind of feeling weird in this uh, t-shirt. So. <laughs> so I'm really excited to play today. Uh, today I'm going to play soccer. Never have it played before. For me, it's kind of weird sport. I don't know rules, so I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm excited. Like like football players does. Okay. <laughs> I know couple football players like Shevchenko, Ronaldo, um, Zidane. I guess it's it. Uh, I know two like a couple of soccer players. First one is David Beckham, and the second one is um, Kaka. I, I I think he's a soccer player, right? Is he? Me and Carolina, we expect that. After today's game, we're becoming a very famous football players for Canada. There's two ways to dribble the ball. With the inner part of your foot or with the outer part. To shoot the ball wherever you want, the best way to hit it is with your laces. The football players are hot and the game is not so hot. You can use your knees or thighs to control the ball down to your feet. Once the ball is on your feet, you can control with both inner or outer part of your foot. Once learned the previous steps, you can combine them to set up for a nice shot. Let's try that one more time, but this time while receiving the ball. Okay, we just want to say thank you, Sebastian, for this experience. Um, it was fun, but at the same time, it was hard and we realize that this game is really dynamic it, yes and as a coach you are really nice you didn't <laughs> push enough uh, everything was clear and you give us uh, time until we will learn how to write moves 
uh, to do the moves and it was so much fun. Yeah, so we really like it. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you girls did a fantastic tool. Um, worked hard and you girls learned in like very few time things that a lot of people wouldn't so congratulations to both of you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you girls have future in soccer future. There are sports out there that require a lot of dexterity and hand-eye coordination but most importantly you need balance. Our next doc is on skateboarding and believe me you need to have perfect balance to ride on one of those. Let's take a look at that now. Hi, my name's David Galloway and I've been skateboarding for 27 years now. During those 27 years of skateboarding, Dave has made a positive impact on the skateboard community in Ontario by running skateboard clubs and being a leader through an organization called Skate Life. Yeah, skate Life is an international organization uh, that works exclusively with skateboarders, uh, hanging out with them, whether it's in the park, on the streets, at the skate shops, even getting to know, you know, people involved in the skate industry, uh, but, you know, mainly working with youth and young adults and just, you know, presenting a positive, I guess, skate lifestyle to them. Grade 10 at high school, sitting in the smoking area, not smoking, but there was a small little set of stairs. One, there, two guys came along, one guy ollied off, and I remember the other guy boneless, and I happened to be just sitting on the ground, but to me, they were flying through the air, and I just thought, man, I gotta do this, so that's how it all started. Dave wanted to take his passion for skateboarding and be a positive light in his community, so he started the very first Ontario Skate Life Skate Club in the Oshawa area over nine years ago put together some ramps, rails, uh, whatever we could just scavenge for wood and make actually a pretty cool little miniature skate park that's pretty mobile. And yeah, on Thursday nights, uh, during all the warm months, we bring everything out on the street. And yeah, Halloween, we do a big Halloween event. Uh, and it was always a great turnout. Uh, a crew came down from Toronto. And actually, there was a lot of local guys hanging out, skating, having a great time. We're just finishing up with our Halloween Skate Club event. Really, uh, in the end, it was a, just an outreach to, to the youth in this community here in Bowmanville, especially the skateboarding youth. Uh, yeah, it went over really well and got a lot of thanks from uh, the different uh, guys here who were taking part in the event. Yeah, David Galloway, he's been doing skate life forever. He loves skateboarding, he loves kids, and he's just always happy to be out on the board and building relationships and having fun times. Being involved with the youth to even now young adults and helping them just make right choices in their life, it, it's neat to be a part of you know, that, uh, just seeing them do the right thing, I guess in life, right choices. We got one more duck to show you guys before we wrap up this episode. But first, we're gonna live, go to, gonna go live to our studio Three. and check up on our special guest. How's it going over there? And we're back with my boy James. He kind of taught me a couple of tricks, but I fell on my butt too much. It, it actually really hurt. I'm, I can't lie. About that. <laughs> yeah. So James, how long have you been skateboarding, bro? Uh, I've been skateboarding for about seven years now. So I started when I was uh, seven or. <laughs> 13, and uh, yeah, I'm 20 now. So, so seven, seven years is a long time. Like, I yeah. I honestly was basically, like, still in, like, diapers. <laughs> like, I honestly, I I can't even think of anything that I've done that was, that's kind of quite like this. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's a lot of, uh, you put yourself in a position where you're scared at pretty much all times you're on your board, so. Oh, yeah. It's but, pretty, but it, it, there's thrill with it, obviously, yeah. right? Have you broken anything? Or? Um, besides, like, the excessive trauma to my brain from <laughs> copious amounts of uh, skateboarding and uh, dr drugs. 
Uh, I'd say no, just my arm. I just snap oh, my you, I snap my wrist right there. You can kinda. see some scarring and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at I got my awesome. elbows are. <sighs> I've only broken fingers, so I'm fine. But oh. show me something, bro. I wanna I wanna see if I can break another bone in my body. Guess what, buddy? It's your lucky what? day What's today, up? because. No, is that another board? <gasps> yeah. There yeah. you go, buddy. My first board, <laughs> actually. It's not new though, obviously. No, right? it's, it's not it's, new. It's still a probe deck. Is it your old board, your first board, or something? Ah, uh, yeah, I was. Let's see it. Yeah. Uh, actually, that was like my fourth or something. It's got like a blue jay on it. That's pretty cool. So All what right, are we buddy. Doing? What are we doing, bro? Okay, we Let's got do this. tricks for the day. Yeah. Casper. What? What? Wait, wait. What's it called? Casper. It's a really weird name. I don't know why. Why is it called Casper? I don't know. Skateboarders are pretty stupid. <laughs> they come up with whatever names for their tricks. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a a move called the Zach. All right. Trademark that. Yeah. All right, buddy. TM. Let's okay, what are we doing? get it. You put your feet underneath, underneath the board. Underneath Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you flip yeah, up. Eh? Okay, I'm kind of like nervous, but you can do it, man. Oh, oh, you almost got I it. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. I got this. I got it's this. Fun. Very nice, very nice. Ready for this? You got it, buddy. I am good. Do we need a medic? Yeah, I think yeah. we need a, need a medic. Medic? Medic on, uh, in the studio, Dad! please. Dad! Dad! Father! <laughs> I have fallen and right, I've gotten just, enough. Let's just roll around. I'm down. All right, I'm down. Is there a name for this or anything? Ah, uh, it's just, just called cruising, brother. Cruising, man. See, it? James, my butt does actually hurt. Dude. Does it? It no. does hurt. I can't kickflip, man. I guess that's why I have a crack in my butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, want to get some tricks going? Yeah, buddy. What do we got? Late front chill. Oh no! I can attempt that, but I don't know if I can actually do Try it. Try it. <laughs> oh, there you go, buddy. Yeah. Oh, let's just the stay adrenaline. There. I don't know how you like. Oh, I can't skate either, man. I, I'm out of breath, man. I don't know about you, bro. I've already fallen so much today that I don't even know what I'm doing. Yeah, bud. All right. You know what we should do? Yeah, let's do a trick. We should do What's big this? tricks. Yeah? With my chair, eh? I'm taking okay, your chair. let's do it, buddy. Let's, let's get it. it. Ant me up. That's good? Right here. Yeah. 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 Woo! Oh! Beauty! Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> that was Ooh. awesome, brother. Boom. Woo! That was nice. I felt good. A bit scary. You, you can't do anything like that, right? You probably could, but I don't know. This I'll die. I'll die. Yeah. All right, buddy. Beauty. Thanks, man. James, you awesome, bro. You gotta teach me something. I wanna be like Tony Hawk. <laughs> Honestly. You're like the next, like, Ryan. Thank you so much, James, for being here with us on the journal. And thank you, Zach, for joining us as well. Get an ice pack, bud. We got a post workout dog for you. Toronto is filled with juice bars and we got one that will give you that special boost. Let's go over to that documentary right now. My ultimate goal is to live to be 125 years old, but healthy. My name is Steve Santa. I'm the owner of Pharmacia. I own 60%. My business partner, Brian, owns 40. This is something I've started myself. It's my lifestyle that I've been doing since I was a kid. Reality kicked in oh, when I got gout. I was a bodybuilder. I was working out a lot. I was taking a lot of protein. So I ended up getting gout. Cured myself, basically, with all my knowledge that I've learned as a kid. And then after that happened to me and I cured myself from the gout, I realized that, holy smokes, uh, I can help my other uh, friends and family and clients. I'll eat solids once a day, sometimes once a week, right? Depending on what I'm doing. But most of the, the stuff I drink is like smoothies, right? I have all the fiber in there, I have all my protein, I have all my omega-3s, I have everything I need, full spectrum. 
you know, and then once in a while I'll have a burger, but the burger's good, or I'll have a pizza, you know, good quality pizza, good quality burgers, things like that. I still enjoy life, right? Too many people are worried about, okay, how many calories are in this and how many calories in that. So people will say, how many calories are in your smoothie? I'm like, does it matter? Why don't you ask me how many nutrients are in the smoothie, right? Our smoothie is probably the same amount of calories as a Snicker bar. So the calories are really irrelevant. We open up as a juice bar just because the general population likes juices, right? So that's kind of like a marketing tactic. We're eventually going to change it to health bar once we know that most people are understanding what we do and, you know, if they want to come to get healthy, they'll come here. Most of the products that we use, they're, they're called tonic herbs with our herbs. The difference between tonic herbs and, and regular herbs are tonic herbs you can take every day. Anybody can take it. Kids can take it. Old people can take it. It just gets stronger the more you take it. Organic food still has chemicals. Like I said, there's chemicals all around us. What we're not doing as a human species is detoxing, which is huge. And it blows my mind that nobody's doing that. Nobody's detoxing. It's so easy. It's as easy as going 24 hours with no food, no water. Your body will continuously detox, detox, detox. But if you're putting in more than what your body can handle, your body's going to just like slow down one day. I'd say 50% uh, of the people that come in are regulars and uh, that are willing to learn, right? Like people, there's the odd person that come in here that don't get, they don't get it and they're thinking, why is your juice $10, you know? And then they walk out, I can get a juice for like three bucks at McDonald's. I'm like, okay, you know, go ahead. So you're gonna get some people that get it, some people that don't. Uh, in the end, we're, we're here to help people that wanna get it, right? That they're in it already and we just bring them that step further, right? All right, that's all the time we have for today's episode of The Journal, everybody. We hope you had a fun time watching all those documentaries about sports. Before we go, we're going to go back to the studio and watch Justin skateboard one last time. Yo! Hey, guys. You guys ready for this? Guess what this is? Stunts. Stunts, man. Stunts. Let's do it. Let's get some stunts this, going. Dude! Yo, James, I got something better, bro. What do you got? Watch this, yo. What do you got? You ready for this? What do you got? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got this. You ready? You ready? You ready? Yeah. Jump over me. Woo. Do it! Do it! Yeah! I like that energy! Give me some, baby! Give me some, bro! Yeah! All right. I think I'm just stunt, gonna stunt, reel stunt, around a little bit, stunt, bud. Stunt, 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 stunt. Because I can't do any of that crazy stuff. I just wanna flow, you know? Yeah. Flow. Oh. <laughs> flow. Bud. Let's get a trick, man. I want to see something before I. All right. Caveman. Caveman. Oh, no, 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 I can't caveman. Okay. Uh. What do we I'm, got? I'm gonna try the Casper again. Casper? Yeah. Okay. Be warned. Remember. I am. Just like that. Got it. Bless. Sweet. Got it, bruh. Good Woo! One, you see that? I love it. I actually faked it. I <laughs> love it. Okay, I just, uh, just want to move. Yo, Roll here. around, you know. Yo, here. Let's get it. Let's get it, buddy. Let's get it? What are we doing? I don't know what's going on. So you know what? All right, guys. Thanks for having me, buddy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. It has been nice for coming out, bro. Yeah. I love, love. I actually do want to try this, man. I actually do want to try, 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 try. this. Oh, this new crazy mother.